three. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Carla Dawn Live Show. I'm Carla Gordy Bristol, and I'm happy that you've tuned in today. So by the post, you know my guest is my cousin, you may not have known that part, but Robin Terry. She is the chairwoman and CEO of the Motown Museum in Detroit, Michigan. Hi, cousin. Hi, cousin. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> this is fun to have you here. Right. We, the, my post does say this location is the Motown Museum, but we are actually in Century City, California, <laughs> which is just outside nice Beverly Hills. Nice to be Hills. here. Nice to be here. So it's nice good and to warm. Have you. Isn't it? The weather's been great. Yeah. This was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, back home, I think it is some they're probably somewhere in the 50s and they're in the midst of like rainstorms for the next two days mm. so i'm happy to be here oh my goodness well hello i see you out there hi um so happy to have you on and we have so much that we can talk about about the museum what you're doing but you know this is feminism last year was feminism year it's continuing this year women are doing yeah. even bigger things than ever before they're being respected now more than they used to be in the business place. So I want to kind of go through what you've navigated in your life to get where you are, you know, CEO of this museum, which is a wonderful thing, but to carry on our family's legacy and your, her, aunt, her um, grandmother is Esther Gordy Edwards, who founded yes. the Motown Museum many years ago, and that's a lot to take on and yeah, have a family and all that good stuff. So, you know. What, what, what was I what, thinking? What were you? Yeah, so I, you know, I know you, you did the traditional route. You know, you go to school, you go to college, you right. do those kind of things. You got another job. You, you take out the family thought, business. You thought you had a path there I set. I did. God had another player. He had another player. <sighs> he did. So, so you, you, what's your degree in? I actually got my degree from Eastern Michigan University in telecommunication and film. I thought I was going into television. Okay. And, um, and here we are. <laughs> and here we are. Um, my, I minored in communication, so public relations actually became my pathway. Mm -hmm. And I was a PR professional for 10 years. I think it's something you never give up. So yeah. I'm constantly, you know, writing and handling talent and just like things that are just mm -hmm. now innate for me. But, yeah. um, but I did that for 10 years for... Okay. Um, you know, some national corporations like General Motors and mm -hmm. um, and then smaller, I worked for their agency and then um, some smaller entities, but important, like yeah. the College for Creative Studies in Detroit, okay. which produces most of our transportation design professionals today mm. in the industry. Um, wow, and then uh, ultimately I ended up going to, I ended up switching gears and going to Focus Hope, which is a real humanitarian kind of um, nonprofit that that you know infuses dignity in the lives of every person, no matter what their stage is in life. From folks who are homeless, who are grocery shopping, mm -hmm. and they use carts like everybody right. else, even though their food is free, um, and training that they do. But anyways, I, mm -hmm. so I ended up going to Focus Hope and doing fundraising. Okay. And I was a major gifts officer there, and that's where I, you know, kind of got my my little wings in the fund development world, and all of it was preparing me for Motown Museum. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? I, yeah. I love that. That That's some great experience, though. Yeah. And I always say to people that whatever you start doing early in life, they're the tools that you're going to need yeah. for whatever path you end up finding that passion area, and you're going to take those resources. Because some people say, "How did? What does this degree have to, have do, to do with, with this? that?" You know. Well, and it, and it does apply. I think it is. Um, I think our great grandfather said, "No lesson learned is ever wasted." That's right. And that my life has been that every experience I've ever had. You know prepared me for the moment I'm in today. Mm -hmm. And so, um, wow. You know, so I just you're, go you're with juggling. it. juggling. Yeah, multitasking is involved, juggling, all that. Absolutely. <laughs> Lots. That's, that's an understatement. Um, for the viewers, if you can hear everything okay and see everything clearly, please send me some hearts. Just that, give me that signal because I always want to make sure you have the clearest and uh, most possible view of the show. And that really is helpful to me during the process. Um, because and we're actually at a hotel in Century City. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very the nice. Intercontinental. The Intercontinental. I like to give them a shout out. And we're in the restaurant, which is beautiful. The day is sunny yeah. and bright in Los Angeles. So, and thank you. The hearts are letting me know you can hear me and see us. Oh, we us. love the hearts. You can nice. hear us and see us, and you're enjoying it. So that's great. <laughs> I, I love, love it. That. I love it. And any questions you have about the Motown Museum, any discussion we have, her career path as a woman, how she made it through. Oh, wow, they're flooding the house. I know. I Feel love free to post heart. those questions, comments, anything you like on there. And after the show, we'll both be able to go in and, and address those. Okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? At the end, we might just grab the phone and ask, answer a few right on the spot because she has to catch a flight. <laughs> I do tonight. <laughs> so get her while you can. But it's late. I got time. Get her while you can. <laughs> she's, she's always moving and grooving. So, wow, that's really great lesson because we like to educate, motivate, and inspire yeah. people, especially the youth and then young women, and let them know that even if it's something you're not experienced in or you don't know anybody in that field, you know, just, like you say, le learn lessons. Yeah. Listen. What, what stood out to you that helped as a young girl, would you say? I mean, Anesta was a great help to everybody because she's always talking and sharing information. I, I think, um, I mean, between my mother and Fawn mm -hmm. Donaldson and yeah. my grandmother, I think both were um, fearless in their spaces, right? And mm -hmm. they um, created their own paths sort of operated with their own rules to some degree yeah. and so I think I've inherited a taste of that mm -hmm. um, I think mom Esther our Esther Gordy Edwards um, just you know she just always instilled in you that you were as good as anybody else That's if not better lesson. right okay if not and better so I like that to never underestimate yourself or never think never you know allow yourself to think that you're not worthy of something or don't belong somewhere mm -hmm. that right. you just show up there and um, she would say you know when in Rome do as the Romans go <laughs> in first you know evaluate see what folks are doing mm -hmm. and then um, you know and then do your thing find and your place find and, your and, place and, and, in and do it, it to then, the best of your ability yeah mm -hmm. and so I think that's been a little bit of what I'm doing I'm uh, I'm in an interesting space um, where for me a lot of it is learning as I go right yeah because you didn't train to run a museum. I didn't train to run a museum <laughs> yeah. didn't yeah. plan to run a museum mm -hmm. um, but thanks to my grandmother thanks to our great-grandparents yes. who you know said you're as smart as anybody else pops mm -hmm. would always say you have this guy gave you the same senses as everybody else so you can navigate yes. you know if you trust your senses you can navigate. You don't have to have all the answers. Right. And that's what I had to get comfortable with. Okay. It's, there are a lot of people smarter than me, a lot of people, you know, that have other skills that might appear to be more suitable. Mm -hmm. But this is a space God's planted me in. Mm -hmm. And so I just have to trust what I know and use mm -hmm. my logic, use my instinct, my um, intuition. And you let those things right. guide you, and you can you, you get there. And so in everything you did um, from your first job moving forward, is that kind of the tactic you took with it? Oh, yeah. Intuition has always yeah. been my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's the friend of most women, for sure. I mean, it is. That's why we have it, yes. right? It's Very. when we don't listen to our intuition, yes. we get in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. but you got to tune into it. It's there and present. You have to listen. Yep. And then I not agree. just use it to find out something, you know, you need to know if someone's doing something, find something that can help you navigate to where you want to be. Yeah, and sometimes it's just giving you, you know, a little pause. I don't need you to stop, but I need you to take caution, right? And then other times it's like, no, I need you to stop. <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> so it's either a yellow flag or a red. Right, it's right, or it's go with everything you got, go. Or go right? for it. But you okay. got to be paying attention to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And it could take you to, it takes you to the next level. It, yeah. it's, what you, it's kind of that stepping stone, I would say, to the next thing you have to do. So as you, how many different jobs did you have prior to, and you had to quit your job, make that decision I to take yeah. on the museum too. So what's that process? So in my, I mean, in my PR career, my, um, my, certainly my work at the agency and my work at CCS were the most significant. Mm -hmm. um, and then Focus Hope. And then I made my way, um, I mean, prior to that, I was actually a marketing director for um, a national restaurant. 
and I managed oh, all of their. I didn't know you were in the restaurant. I was. Working around. It's this awesome company out of actually San Diego, Paragon mm -hmm. Steakhouse Restaurant. Okay. And so I opened a bunch of their restaurants <laughs> in the region, Midwest region. Um, hmm. But you know that's in that field of public relations. Oh, yeah, so it that is. was it's just, all similar. Yeah, it all kind of works together. But th I mean, those were really my jobs, my professional mm -hmm. jobs. And you would love doing that when you were in that field. Oh, without question. With I mean, without question. Mm -hmm. And and some of those skills they live with you forever. You never oh, stop yes. using them. It's great skills to have. Yeah. So especially in this age of social media, and I you know you don't do maybe as much personally with the social media. Right. We focus on the the museum work, but. Everybody's about social media today, and yeah. it's all about marketing and promoting yourself. And connecting and to people who connect with what you're doing, connect with your brand. I mean, mm -hmm. all of those things, like I said, they led me to this yeah. place and time. Right. And they aid me in what I do every day because I didn't know this was what I was put here to do. Yeah. <laughs> Most of us don't know where we're going to end up. Yeah. But learn and take in and all that information will direct you if you yeah. flow with it. Yeah. Agree. So you're marketing and your PR and you're doing all that as well as the and CEO. Raising and raising money and yeah. Yeah, and raising funds. I mean that in itself is a career. Yeah. Being a fun you know, fundraiser yeah. for charitable organizations. And yeah. I learned from, you know, a woman, Eleanor Josidas, who was a co founder of Focus Hope, mm -hmm. um, which came out of the riots in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And finding ways to, you know, to support and again provide dignity and access for people who had no entry point into society. So a lot of people who were homeless mm -hmm. um, had no financial resources. But she believed with Father Cunningham that, you know, they were entitled to everything that everybody else was. Mm -hmm. So they created Focus Hope as a place that was safe, mm -hmm. that, um, um, supported folks of you know all different races, religions. Mm -hmm. It was a safe nice. place, and you could have dignity there, having access to everything everybody else That's had. Great. And I got to learn from Eleanor. Um, I got to work directly under Eleanor for at least a year before she passed away. Mm. So yeah, I've had wonderful training. women between my grandmother, <laughs> my mother, and Eleanor Josidas. Yeah. Um, I've been blessed to work with some very strong. Wonderful women who contributed well, a lot to the world and role models is very yep. important to have. Yeah, and my grandpa Fuller Gordy and your grandmother Esther Gordy Edwards are the oldest two siblings. Yes of eight children and they were very close Absolutely yeah, very very close. Absolutely. <laughs> you know everyone in a family links up to certain siblings and they were the two They that, were the two you links. know she was oldest female He was oldest male and they were very close growing up and funny yeah. that they both stressed on mentoring and supporting others and giving back and helping volunteerism was so key for on Esther. Yeah. I mean we had a three hour conversation you know with me about that so it's just something about I guess that's a lesson they both soaked in that was very powerful to them yeah it, I mean that was you know this one of the Gordy family philosophies right it was mm -hmm. push up pull up mm -hmm. so as you push up and create new pathways, chart new pathways, you pull somebody else behind you. Right. And so that showed up in things like mentoring and um, just creating opportunity for other people, mm -hmm. you know, to experience what you have. Right. That's true. Yeah, you got to lift, pull, yep. and not be selfish with it. Be very... Sorry, we are in a restaurant. We are. <laughs> open space to the public. And they're you might, opening now. You might, yeah, it's open, <laughs> it just opened and, and we have people flowing and a beautiful garden outside over here on this gorgeous day. Very nice. It is. Yeah. Are we on the time? <clears throat> We're not. Okay. So, <laughs> so that process of navigating in business, did you have obstacles being a woman in those positions you were in? Because they seem like powerful positions. The short answer is yes, yes, and yes, you know, I think, um, but again, I mean, my grandmother, she just prepared me for a lot of it. I remember Mom Esther saying to me, you know, you're going to go, she would always encourage me to get on boards, mm -hmm. and most of the boards were white, and they were all men, and she would say, get on these boards, and she said, you know, you're going to have ideas, and you're going to voice an idea, and nobody will listen. 
and then somebody else will repeat the idea and suddenly it's the best thing in the world right, right. <laughs> and it's like but did not say that right, exactly. right. Is that what i said um yeah. and and i mean i watched that and i learned how you have to be you know you just have to know how to navigate you know i understood yeah. that i might be in that situation i don't have to get upset because you didn't hear me the, good, the first time mm -hmm. but i know i drove it right right and i know if you want that mm -hmm. line of thinking then you've got to come to me and ask all right what are you mm -hmm. thinking about it, yeah right what was that what, mm -hmm. um, they need the breakdown of that idea mm -hmm. yeah so you allow people to come to you instead of forcing yourself on other people mm -hmm. you know when it's a systematic kind of thing so mm -hmm. um to have that self-satisfaction yeah. of what you've done you know the contribution and just let it organically and happen it because be. it will come back they'll come to you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want more they want that's right so that, a good they idea they, they know the it, source right? they know the source absolutely they may not reveal it yeah. to everyone but sit back and they'll come saying hey what do you stay, think of this what do you think of that and yeah. so be patient stay cool you know? just stay cool and 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 consistent like mm -hmm. just stay consistent so yeah um, yeah, so there's that's tough. Of, that's a tough area for a lot of people. Yeah, you know, I I dealt with that myself, and some people want to immediately be like, hey, yeah, you know, I did this, or what? Just kind of, it, it's hard to sit back when you know you're making a powerful difference to the bottom line at your business and your yeah. company. But in the end, it, it it will come around. Yeah, that's what you were finding through your different areas. It just, yeah, over it always time, will come around. It makes its way. It makes its way back to you. So. Yeah. You know, just you just gotta stay planted, and um, and it works out. Mm -hmm. You must be a very patient person. <laughs> I wasn't. I, I I some people think I do have a lot of patience. I think I've grown a little bit impatient, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that can but that can um, but I I think my spirit in general is is rather patient, forgiving. Um, I hope it is. Um, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> I could probably use a little bit more. It, I know patience does help in any scenario, mm -hmm. but people try you every day. I think it's, it's like hard. you got to be open to learning. Mm -hmm. And I think our family that's one of the things that, um, again, that probably comes from pops, yeah, right? Some it's great being lessons open from the family. to learning so that you are not nothing is matter of fact. Like, mm -hmm. so for me, if somebody says. If somebody has an opinion about something, I want to understand that. Now, it still needs to pass my logic sniff test, yeah. right? But if it is, but I want to be open. Right. I don't want to be narrow-minded that mm -hmm. I only see my way to do it mm -hmm. or accomplish it because you're not going to be successful the world doesn't for a long work like that way. That. Yeah. yeah. You yep. have to be open. So anyone that has that mentality, if they look back at their history with that, it's not working. Yeah. It's only going to take you so far and you're going to crash and burn. Yeah. Somebody else always may have a better perspective, but what you lay your head down on the pillow at the end of the day, whatever that is, you've got to be okay with that. And I think um, I just did this interview with Google and they asked, you know, as a woman leader, mm -hmm. you know, what do you think is most important for a woman to understand and I said I said you've got to get comfortable with who you are mm -hmm. period yeah. because everybody has an opinion other people will have their own ideas agendas opinions we think you should do it this way we think you should do it this way mm -hmm. and you can't lead that way somewhere you have to stake you know, put your stake yeah. in the ground and say, somebody else might do it differently, but this is how... You're the leader. I'm doing it, yeah. and, and, I'm, and you got to be okay owning that. Mm -hmm. And that's hard for us because as women, we tend to be people pleasers. Yes, that's, right? a, that's a general nature. Of yeah, the it's, women, it's, so. it's how we're created. And so when you lead, certainly you want to be open to other ideas, but there are those times where you have to say, you know what? It's the decision I'm making today. Mm -hmm. So, right. I think women. I agree with that, and I think women tend to have a little more fear in that yeah. because it's hard to get to a position of power as a woman. Yeah. Um, so when you reach that, you don't want to mess it up, and yeah. you don't want to make the wrong the, the wrong decision, and yeah. so you're a little more kind of like you, you maybe not. You want to let the man kind of chime in a yeah. little more to make sure. You, you're right. You really have to stand up. So you've taken the philosophy because you've navigated your way well to just kind of you believe in this stick to it 
you listen. There are times when that's the position you have to take. There are other times you have to be more fluid and you have to how be do you more navigate the difference? How do you what what how does someone know when they need to uh, I think when you have deal breaking moments, mm -hmm. you have moments that may conflict with your values or there's moments where you um, you know, your team needs you. Mm -hmm. They just need leadership, right? So you got to step in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's those moments just show up and when they do you respond right it just i don't know it just ha it, you know when to do it it's that intuition right that's <laughs> it all comes down to the intuition that intuition that's, that's, tells key, you, that's key you know when when to do it and i think the other thing is is women we tend to want to be liked everybody wants to be yeah. liked you want to be special and leadership yeah. doesn't afford you that all the time no it's a it's a tough position to be in uh, uh, you know yeah, really you gotta really you to, want that. You can't please everybody. Nope. You know, you really can't please. If you try to please everybody, you, you're gonna you, mess you, up you, the program. <laughs> 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 Doesn't work. But if you're successful, people will like you. You mm -hmm. please, you please the yeah, people that matter exactly. in that scenario. Exactly. And then when you're successful, it seems that everybody wants to like you. Yeah, so. I, I would agree. Yeah, you have I to would. navigate that. That's a whole other thing. Now you're pretty good at keeping a good team. And navigating who needs to come off that team, you know, who, who's good to bring on to the team. And then coming from a family that we come from, it's a, an extra special situation to have to navigate that as well. What are the motives between people trying to connect to the Motown Museum and that yeah. legacy and that history? So how do you work that? You know, I, I think that's probably... Um, one of the things that's most challenging for me because I get connected to people, mm -hmm. right? And, and I get connected to people and I get invested in people and I like people, yeah. right? So it's, it's difficult for me to separate. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting. So I asked our, our uncle <laughs> about a year ago, I said, what's more important, loyalty or capability? Mm -hmm. And he said, capability. Like quickly. No. It, immediately. Mm -hmm. And I didn't expect that. I expected him to say, Yeah, I would think so as well. He said, Capability. He said, you can, you can make someone loyal, someone capable, you can make them loyal. Mm -hmm. If you pay them well, you take care mm -hmm. of them, they will become loyal. But someone who, is, who lacks capability and is just loyal right. may not be able to help you get to the next level. I get it. And so, you know, I, I mean, obviously with the museum, we are in a space of tremendous growth in a small window of time. Mm -hmm. And it requires a skill set that we didn't require five years ago. Right. And so it's been really difficult. You've got to change up your staff. Yeah, it's been difficult for me to, people who have been there and have been supportive and are like family, you know, to have to... Ooh, mm. pull out of that because we now yeah. require something different in this day um, that has probably been one of the you I'm know sure. most challenging things for me quite yeah. frankly yeah I can I can really imagine that yeah yeah the growth process in a, in a business um, does require staffing changes and yeah it, and you can't make things so personal you do your best for so long but in the end yeah when it especially when it's a financial issue yep and the success of that brand, yeah, you have to make those changes. It's 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 a delicate and that's, spot. That's what um, our uncle was saying to me. Mm. He said, you know, the folks that were there for me in music, some of them did not have what I needed to go to television, mm -hmm. or those folks didn't have what was needed to get to film, mm -hmm. or those folks didn't have what was needed to get to Broadway. Mm -hmm. And so, if you allow yourself to get bogged down in all right. the relationship, then you'll never get there. You're not going to get the Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's it a doesn't process. mean you can't cherish those relationships. Right. But you have to know when to, you know, to bring some other people on board. Right. And, right. and hopefully those people that maybe can't keep up to the next level can understand yeah. that perspective. Yeah, it's important so. that people hope so. hopefully are, you know, that's why we do the show. We want our viewers to think of these different perspectives yeah. when they're in that scenario and maybe they'll see the other side and understand more and they'll go find 
yeah. that place where they can be most effective and make a difference yeah and yep. and and that in that spot or it may elevate them to do some things that can take them to the next Absolutely. level people, you know yeah I, th I think they can if people keep you have to be proactive and make it happen yeah yeah they can be very capable. Well, that's really, that's some great, uh, powerful information. So let's get into the museum itself and the work there. Um, the Motown Museum, tell us a little bit about, I know the story. Yeah. <laughs> but how it was founded by Aunt Esther. So you but can tell that part. Tell, yeah. Our, <laughs> my Aunt Esther, her mama Esther, grandmother, uh, founded the Motown Museum um, by collecting a lot of the outfits and, and uh, lyric sheets and you know items that the artists were just kind of thinking was not valuable at the time. They were finished with a show. It could be a hat, it could be Michael Jackson's glove, whatever it may be. Yeah. And she found a way to collect and save those. And Uncle Barry's like, ah, oh, whatever, you know, <laughs> you want to do that, <laughs> go have it. Um, and it turned into housing it at the original location where Uncle Barry started Motown, Hitsville, USA, in Detroit yeah. on West Grand Boulevard. Yep. What's the address? 2648 West 2648 Grand. West Grimble, it's a very famous um, location, yeah. is now an expansion project, which we'll talk about. And so you took over after Aunt Esther passed away. And when she was here, you really got involved, uh -huh. heavily involved when she yep. was still living. But now that she's passed on, you're really carrying on. I mean, you are carrying on her vision, her dream, her passion, and taking it on yourself. Yeah. To forego some of your own personal happy, as we talked about those. Yeah. I don't, don't mind to depress her on the show, <laughs> <laughs> but you were really successful. My moment in, in the sunset, and, and, and I'm only, <laughs> I'm only saying it to say to people: sometimes you're you're on a path that's successful, and you're yeah. happy, and it's great. Um, but family is important too, and and the hard work that one of your family members does that you love so much, you don't want to see it end because it could have just stopped when yeah. she passed and been over or someone else could have taken it over that may not have been able to sustain it to this level and there would not today be a Motown Museum. Maybe it would have, I'm not trying to say no one else could do it, but yeah. you decided, and it was a tough decision to have to say, okay, I'm successful over here, I'm making good money, I'm really doing well and something I love, but what made you finally decide, if you can share, to, you had to grapple with that and to say, okay, I'm doing this for what reason? So, um there was so much you just said. Um, <laughs> what made you give up the so career? So what made me do that? So I would do anything for my grandmother. I mean, that's really the bottom line. My grandmother, I lost my mother to breast cancer when I was 15. My grandmother was 39. Um, I then was fortunate to be raised by both of my grandmothers, but I lived with Mama Esther. And her mother, right? Fawn, was amazing. She I love was her awesome. Mom. Like, She's it didn't get any better lady. than yeah. that. That was like the cream <laughs> of the crop. Um, and so... So I owed a lot to my grandmother, and I love my grandmother. She became like a second mother to me because she raised me for that second half yeah. of my life. Saw yeah. me get married, have children, all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so when the time came where she needed my support, then there wasn't another option. I mean, it really wasn't anything to think about. Um, the she was not in a position to be able to continue her business which i knew meant a lot to her right um and even caring for her other affairs it 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 wasn't a thought like i just did yeah. it because yeah, you had to take it her as well at a point and the museum it was yeah a, it was a lot going that on was, at a it point. was a lot but um you know but i, I would do it again mm -hmm. and the but what's interesting and this is like a point for your viewers and listeners there came a point, you know, we're on an expansion journey to raise $50 million and expand Motown Museum, but there came a point where I was working so hard, and I remember sitting in church, and literally the reason I was doing it was because it was my grandmother's vision, yeah. and I just wanted to see it happen for her legacy, right? Yeah. It really had nothing to do with me. I wanted to see it happen for her legacy okay. because she thought the story of Motown was so important that ne the future generations needed to know it. Yeah. Um, and so she protected that little house fiercely, <laughs> right? Like fiercely. <laughs> so at least I could do was keep doing yeah. that, right? Yeah. So when this idea of expanding that, mm -hmm. you know, and really creating this world-class institution happened, I took it on totally thinking about my grandmother and what she would want and I'm sitting in church one day and I was like God look 
I said, you got to give me my own reason to fight for this. Yeah. I I'm not going to make it to the end on somebody else's vision. Mm -hmm. And that's powerful. And yeah. I was I was doing it for her, not for mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. not for something I believed, but I was doing it for my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there in the pew, and I kid you not, it dropped in my spirit, imagine the world without it. Mm. And I sat there, and I imagined Detroit without Motown. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, like those inner city kids have nothing to look up to to say, mm -hmm. mm, they looked like me. Mm -hmm. They did it. I can do it. Mm -hmm. I imagined this country without it. Yeah. And I thought the country won't understand the power of what one man can do. Mm -hmm. Right. With support right. of family. And I, but like, where does that show up? Where does the contributions of of black brown color people show mm -hmm. up yeah. there are very few examples of that Absolutely. in our country and then i looked at the global landscape and i said if you didn't have that example mm -hmm. we'd be a very different planet Absolutely. and that became my inspiration it because i said your oh passion. then i could own that yeah I could own that. I'm like, okay, bet. I can wake up every day. <laughs> yeah. I can work as many hours as I need mm -hmm. to. I can hustle. I can, you know, press mm -hmm. because that just couldn't happen. Right? right. So now I had something to fight for. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Well, yeah. So find your own passion. Yeah. You your got to find drive. your own reason to fight. It's okay to follow, you know, help others, love others, be sentimental, but yeah. that sh can't drive your life. Yeah. yeah. You've got to find mm -hmm. your own reason to I fight. Agree. And all my intentions were good. You know, my grandmother's legacy, we wouldn't be here, wouldn't be having the conversation. That's right. Um, yeah. But I did have to find my why right. in it. Right. Because it's not an easy job. Yeah. And you have no. anything you try to do, <laughs> far <laughs> so, from easy. Yeah. And um, you have to have drive and passion and heart into something, whatever it may be, because it's going to be difficult and challenging yeah. and to pull through those challenges if you believe in it and think you're making. And that's a big, powerful difference. Of course, yeah. the story of Motown to preserve that yeah. is, is huge. I mean, that it, it, it's global. Yeah. And it some really days I'm global. stronger than other days. Yeah. I mean, I have days where I'm like, oh. I don't think I can do this, right. but then then I just keep that why in front of me, mm -hmm. and then, you know, tomorrow I might be a little bit stronger, yeah. and I can come out a little bit harder, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you got to dig, 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 dig deep, because right now you're in this $50 million fundraising yes. campaign for this enormous expansion yeah. at the site of the yep. original building. You've bought up several properties, and I don't know what else is going on there, but it's about to turn into the state of this art museum with interactive things and all yeah. kind of wonderful things we can't probably get into but people will see something they've never seen before it will be a world-class entertainment and education destination um, today it's one of the um, it is considered the number one international tourist destination in Detroit so people come from all over the world to this little bitty house so whether it's artists I mean, this week alone, Demi Lovato was there um, this week. We had a week where we had everybody from like Jay Leno, Andrew Lloyd Webber, um, Beyonce, Jay-Z. I mean, mm. like all in a week. Wow. Like it's, it's, it's a they place. They want to feel and experience that original building, yes. that story that affected their life. It means so much to them to journey back to that place where they're the icons, the mm. folks who, yes. you know, charted the, the path Wonders, for them. Stevie Smokey Robinson, Diana Ross and the Supremes, yep. the Miracles, all these artists, Martha Reese and the Vandellas. That's their birthplace. It, this, that's where they yeah. were there, touching those, you know, walls and instruments and sleeping. Yep. <laughs> and yep. Staying, writing those hits. I mean, magic happened in yeah. that space. And, yeah. it, and what came out of it, changed this world it shaped our culture I mean it was transformative right. and so people come they come there so what we're endeavoring to do is to take that and put it on steroids mm -hmm. and make it this you know musical wonderland that inspires people with the story of Motown inspires future entrepreneurs future creatives like you know it's not a place to just come look at stuff on the wall and learn history <laughs> That, Which is fine for those places that have it, but yeah, but that's not gonna, what this yeah. is. This is it's an experiential place where you are immersed in um, music and creativity and 
um, nostalgia and um, possibility for the future and seeing mm -hmm. your own greatness like mm -hmm. that's that's the goal of this, this museum. I love that. And you'll leave highly educated and yeah. a new person, I think, yep. probably. You, you come in feeling, okay, Motown story, I know what it's about. Let me just kind of see some things about, let me go see the piano where they may have written. Let me do these yeah. things. But when you leave, you get that and a yeah. tremendous amount more that you can apply to whatever you're doing probably in, in, yeah. in entertainment or music or you, you'll get you know. I mean you'll you'll get the traditional things you'll see Michael Jackson's hat and glove you'll see the original recording studio so mm -hmm. all of the um, historical sort of artifacts all of those kinds of things mm -hmm. are in place but layered on top of that is state-of-the-art technology mm -hmm. and innovation that allows you to become the creator right um, and in mm. doing so allows you to see the possibility in you right and I think that's the you know that's the new wave that's of museums nice, yeah. and that's really building on the spirit and legacy of mm -hmm. Motown not Absolutely. just the history of Motown no that's it the educational part of it is key yeah not and just visually mm -hmm. you know our family's legacy the Gordy family was an enterprising family absolutely and just learning the lessons um, and the philosophies that mm -hmm. they embodied mm -hmm. um, and perpetuated throughout Motown yeah. that allowed people to be successful. That's right. We want to share did. that with the world. They did. We would hear stories upon stories um, from our grandparents and yep. parents um, of how to do things. The philosophy, There is a Gordy philosophy. Or <laughs> there are. <laughs> yeah, there are many. That Pops Gordy and grandmother and all. With, I mean, he owned a grocery store, printing shop. My grandpa and your aunt. I mean, yep. your grandmother. Yep. Our grandparents had a Printing, printing shop, shop together. The Gordy Print Shop. The grocery store. The Booker Gordy had a grocery store. Grocery store. Yeah, I mean, they were very entrepreneurial. And this is long before Motown was started. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people don't know. So, yeah, those tools were instilled. We and think about things like, you know, pop up businesses and incubators and um, crowdsourcing and crowdfunding as if they are new concepts. Right. And they're not. They're not. Yeah. Our, our family did all of that. Motown was the perfect example of a startup, a pop-up business. Crowdsourcing is what our family did mm -hmm. by having the Burberry Co-op where they, you know, had their own collective and put yeah. money in and borrowed it to start businesses. Just, yeah. Like that's... Um, genius. It's not it's new. It's genius and it was going on back yeah. in the 50s. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So, the great tools. Well, this is just going to be so amazing to see. I can't yeah. wait till it's done. But to get it there, I mean, you have a lot of people that are passionate about Motown, a lot of celebrities, yeah. a lot of just general people that, I mean, I run into them all the time. And when they just have that conversation with us as offspring yeah. of that legacy, they get so excited. And to see some of those people want to come and put money in to reach this $50 million goal yeah. to preserve this museum, that legacy is so exciting. They're so passionate and they're coming and coming yeah. and want to be on the beginning of that movement exactly. and be a part of it and be involved in these planning stages uh, financially. And that, I mean, that must be just so wonderful to it's, see. It, this is a project that's been well received. Motown is so loved around the world yeah. um, that you have companies like Ford Motor Company, who is our lead sponsor in UAW Ford. Um, and they have put millions of dollars into this project. Mm -hmm. And right now we are in a space where, you know, it's those folks that really want to be leaders in this yeah. and want to, um, you know, invest in this story and have recognition at a level that's really mm -hmm. leadership. That's right, yeah. Um, that, you know, today we're, we're looking for, but there'll be opportunities for everybody to to have involved. their part of it. You everybody, know. there'll be a place for everybody to plug in. <laughs> to say, I was part of the, you know, expansion of this enormous Motown yeah. Museum project. Yeah, this and, beloved uh, part of our culture, yeah. really, our music right. culture, our um, our history. You know, it just Motown is such a unique force that I don't know in our lifetimes if anything else has played as big a part shaping who we are as a culture. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean it's. It's one of those, it's like the branch that has many yep. arms that has branched off and helped. Touched, you influenced, know, shaped. Or the root, I should say, yeah. that has many branches. Yeah, so the 
and it's just affected the lives yeah. of so many. I mean, everybody just about, no matter where you are in the world, has it doesn't a Motown matter what story you look can like, relate. Exactly. Doesn't matter how much money I, you have. Yeah. I mean, Motown so this had is, that. Yeah, and unique there, quality. Yeah, and there's so many museums out there that people do not have any connection to, but they go yes. and they're interested. So to have one that affected your life in some way or that you're passionate about, I mean, I think it's exciting. So yeah. kudos to all those people that jumped in and they're yes. already involved in investing. If anybody out there is interested in being involved in the financial stage of this or knows donors that are passionate about Motown, the history, or just love to support something that yeah. they want to see carry legs for many, many, many years to come, um, they're free to go and donate to the Motown Museum. This is all yeah. coming from me. She's all passive about it over doing her work, but I'm pushing <laughs> because it's, it's, I don't want people to miss the opportunity. You know, there's those yeah, situations no, where people see it and they know it and they go, yeah, I want to do it. And then it's like, ah, we, we reached our goal. We're gone. We have this whole plaque yeah. or wall or whatever, and you missed out. What? Wait, wait. I got, yeah. I got $10 million. I got $5 million. You know, and it's like, we'll take it, of course, but you want to get in earlier, too. Well, you know? and they're unique. I mean, we're at a space where there are unique naming opportunities, and those are not unlimited. Yeah, right? they have a so, room named after you. Have a, a, a floor, a plaque, yeah. a brick, something, a bench. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's all yeah. kind of opportunities. And being at the beginning of something, like, who, I mean, this is mind boggling to yeah. think that anybody wouldn't see how enormous Motown is, that legacy, that story, that history. And, um, you know, it, yeah. it, it's, you got to jump it's in and be a part of it. It's one of those once in a lifetime opportunities to get behind something that really was a, um, a game changer and something that that goes down in history but also continues to contribute yeah. right so it has a life absolutely um, and it, it, you know we have rare, you have rare opportunities in your lifetime to support you really something do. like that and some people just have money that they donate just to things just because but they don't have any kind of yeah. a connection like this so i love that so i'm going to i'm going to stop my push there you know, do it in the name of Carla Dawn. <laughs> Carla <laughs> Gordy Bristol sent you. You know, we're going to donate because Carla Gordy Bristol told us about it. Right. But um, there'll be lots of parties and celebrations as it gets closer. Yeah. Um, what's the time frame now? What are you thinking? Um, uh, it's when we raise the fifty maybe, million. Yeah, okay. So once you raise it, then we will keep going, and we will exceed that. Um, you know, because we want to build nice, healthy endowment. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So it's there in, you know, for you years help. and years and yeah, years. Yeah, the educational come. aspect of it. Social media is always changing. I know you guys yeah. are on the forefront mm -hmm. of that. You've got great team, people yeah. working. So it's exciting. Very exciting. So folks exciting. can follow us on Facebook, yeah, Twitter. The, the, yeah, Facebook, museum. Twitter, Motown Museum. MotownMuseum.org mm -hmm. um, is our, our website. And so the Facebook is Motown Museum. Mm -hmm. Yes. See a lot. They keep posts on the Motown Museum Facebook page. Yeah, all the become time. a member. Yeah. It's another like great way page. to be involved. That's really yeah. Know you what's can happening. join. How much is it to become a member? Forty five dollars to become annual? a member, and that's annual membership. It's unlimited visits to the museum. You get, mm. you know, that's great. Not prizes, but gifts um, from us. Maybe you get discount. to bring a friend. Mm. You get discounts. Um, that's invitations. Forty five dollars for the year to be a member of the Motown Museum. It's enormous you value. Know? Yeah. Yeah. At minimum, even if you do that just to support it, and yeah, you know when you're in town, you you come through. But Absolutely. you can say I'm a member of the Motown, yeah, and it's a really cute car. I know. In fact, it's the, <laughs> is it the car that it I posted? Is. It's a nice. It is. So on the post for this show, there's a card she's holding that Robin and is holding, and that's card. the card you get. That's nice. And does it is it does it say I am Motown on it? Is that the hashtag? I think that's it a, does. So there's a hashtag <laughs> I am Motown as well. That yeah. I like. That's very cute. Yeah. So that makes that really to me owns being a part of something absolutely of that history yeah and then i mentioned all the artists i didn't mention my uncle Mar our uncle marvin gay too we got to make sure he's in there. he's definitely you part of that original history i know exactly <laughs> i can't end the show without that and now um my mother your auntie iris gordy is um what's her she's position on our on the board, board? she's yeah she's a she's one of our trustees That's on the board so mm -hmm. mom is a trustee on the motown museum board so she's actively engaged in, in what you're doing. And then at one point you had a West Coast, because we are in Los Angeles, we're in the yeah. West Coast, and um, committee doing some things to help and, and assist. She chairs and our she committee. put me on the West Coast committee. I was to advise or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> help wherever, but whatever we can do on the West Coast. For those watching that are here and want to get involved, reach out. Let me know. We put together any kind of um, fundraisers or rallies, meetings, brainstorming, things like that yeah. are always welcome, Greg. Right? Absolutely. And then we take that over to the lady here, Robin. We just keep it going. Keep it going. Look, this know. is an all hands on deck effort. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love all this work Whatever behind you us. Can do. <laughs> <laughs> That's how big projects are, though. This is a massive project. Yeah. So when you have a massive project, no matter what it is, it takes all hands on deck. Yeah. But I see why you are 
carrying this legacy on for your grandma, Aunt Esther, because you definitely set the tools. She watched you and was so proud of you yeah. and your work when you were doing your own thing. And I know she was probably eyeballing wanting you over there so bad <laughs> full time. Uh -huh. and, and she finally finagled and made it happen. And so you, you left her, allowed her to go peacefully on knowing that it was in it great was hands. Hand. Yeah. And then yeah. Alicia, your sister, is on the board. I have two well. great sisters. Yeah. So um, Alicia Bridgers, mm -hmm. who is on our board. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then Gwen, mm -hmm. our younger sister, who um, lives in Vegas, yes. um, who is supportive in her own way. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we yeah, all carry on the legacy that's of our right. grandmother. That's right. So I just want to make sure we shout them out, too, because it's a yeah. we're strong family, a close family. Yes. Very supportive family. And shout out to Rhonda Rock. Our cousin there who has a program. Talk a little bit about the program before we go about that she does. Rhonda is she part of our speaks. summer camp. She, um, we have Motown EDU summer camp, which is for performing arts kids. Mm -hmm. And it really teaches them to think about and consider entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So they do a lot of branding work mm -hmm. and understanding, you know, how to own their talent and not just be somebody to be discovered, mm -hmm. right? But to own who they are. And um, she does a phenomenal, phenomenal job working with our students. Um, week two, they collaborate on an original song. Oh, nice. And she gets down in there. I mean, she rolls up her sleeves and does a lot it. of arranging work and producing mm. and, and really invests a lot of her soul yeah. into um, the young, the, the students. And they, you know, they're so fortunate. Yes, to have absolutely. Somebody like oh, that yeah. Rhonda's very talented. She's a singer. She travels all over the world singing. Entrepreneur. Um, her son speaker. Rafe is amazing and, and, yeah. and talented as well, who travels and, and performs and things with her. But yeah, that's great that she's doing that with the museum. And that program for the youth is yeah. just remarkable. It's so on the spirit it, of Motown. It's, it's a remarkable program yeah. to help the youth. So if no one in Detroit knew about it, um, or anywhere yeah, in the area, come on out. And sorry for the noise, but they're, they're doing a change over here for a party. But yeah. yeah, so Motown EDU. So they have a whole program there, which is nice. Yeah. So I love it. I love it. Um, I, I think anything else you want to talk that I, I didn't cover? I and tried to cover it. as much as I can because she we could sit here. It. I see hearts I going. Know. I love oh, wow. it. We love the love. <laughs> That was an you Alicia know. thing. I know. That's, I yeah, that must like be Alicia. That. Maybe that's Alicia. Could be. Uh, cousin Alicia. This is the sister here. So everybody, I hope hearts. this has been informative, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, we love that all the fans of Motown. Definitely our Uncle Barry. We wouldn't be you know, here talking about this if it wasn't for him and his vision and his legacy. And yeah. then for his siblings who wanted to support his vision. So yeah. it's all a sign of being supportive, you know, of your family members. You know, you got to help fin friends, family, yeah. be supportive. When someone needs a hand, they have a great idea, don't just shush them aside or just say, I don't have it. Try to do your best to work it. If you personally don't have it, find yeah. some way to help with the resource, your connections. I mean, I just don't get it. I always work to help people um, in any way I can. And if mm -hmm. I can't, then I'll connect them to someone else that may be able Thanks. to. Yep. But yep. it just makes no sense to me for no one. And we grew up like that. We yeah. grew up like that. And I think that also, you know, speaks to the success of all those businesses our family had and the success of Motown Museum. And mom and I do the Friends of Fuller Gordy. We're all doing our areas yes. to carry on our family legacy. And I just love that. And I love that you were here. You know, you were here for work and business and I, I just snatched her in on my show. <laughs> and just said, you're doing my show, <laughs> you know. But you know, I, I wanna say one last thing and that is, you know, whether it's Motown Museum, whatever it is in your community, support our cultural institutions that are telling our life stories. Yeah. No different than what you're doing with your dad and strike test. With we, Papa. Oh, yeah. we have to keep these, these, we have to tell our own stories, first of all. Mm -hmm. So we need to narrate our own stories. Um, but we have to support the institutions that are doing that because that's our culture. That's right. yeah. And it's the only thing that our kids and their kids will have to look to to understand the strength that they come from. And my dad had a quote and he said, if you don't know the strength you come from, you won't believe the strength you have. And that, that's everything for me, right? You won't mm. believe it. Our children that. won't even believe mm -hmm. that they are as innovative, creative, that's as so strong, you have to believe um, to make as it happen. enterprising as they are if we don't do our part mm -hmm. to support, sustain right. 
these cultural institutions that tell that story. That's so accurate. That's so accurate. You got to be able to believe you can make it happen. And so yeah. many of the youth don't because of where they come from, where they grow up, or their yeah. environment doesn't show them that. Yeah. So it's so important. Yeah. And your father, you referenced your father. That's Robert Bullock. Robert is Bullock. Esther Gordy Edwards' son, Robert Bullock, is her father. You're trying to connect how we're all related. I know you're wondering. <laughs> and everybody's like, how are they cousins? I said earlier, my grandfather, Fuller Gordy, is the brother to her grandmother, Esther Gordy Edwards. There we go. And so my dad and her and mom, my mother, my, Iris Gordy, my cousin Iris, are first cousins. Yes, and were the best of, like, yes, freaking like frack. They were in <laughs> and, and they frack. did everything together. But it's yes. funny because my grandpa and your grandmother were, were like this. Yeah. And then their children. Oh, that's I mean, interesting. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Their children became the same bond. Yeah. Yeah. And then, who was, I think Alicia and I, as you kids, all were like, freaking Alicia and I yes. were like this freaking yep. friend yep. growing up. Yep. Same <laughs> age, same. You no, were little. Absolutely. You were so little I was then, the you know. Little one. Then yeah. when she grew up, then we were good. We were, then I got old. <laughs> I was like, okay, old she, old she can hang with us now. <laughs> Oh, I know, I know. We're still young. This you look fabulous. Fun. I, I love so that I got fun. you here. I know, and I miss my Detroit family. I just, yep. it's like I want to come all the time. I'm always saying to you, get me some stuff there. I'll come yes. out there. I want to connect and do, because on Esther, and I will end on this, would grab all the cousins, and we'd be put to work in the museum as kids. Absolutely. I don't care if you're nailing something on the wall, moving desks around, painting something, pulling up carpet, whatever she wanted done. She had a way. something for you to do. And when I was at Michigan State, I used to stay with her on my breaks, and we'd go to do political scene things, and we'd be at the museum. Yep. And I remember yep. distinctly when Michael Jackson made his donation. I think it was 150000 okay, yep. 150, which mm -hmm. I don't know, $1,000 was big. Yeah. You know, everybody yep. was all like big about it. It was huge. Michael it was Jackson. that and the hat and glove. Yeah, That's okay, made he donated so the hat yeah. and glove. So it was a big, big frenzy in Detroit at the time in 88. And I remember we had to get that museum ready for Michael. Yep. <laughs> she was cracking the whip on us. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's come and get this <laughs> Get the, what do you think? We had to be creative, and we got right. this big wall. I mean, it was just yeah. so hands on deck. That's what we did. We showed up and did what we had to do. That's what for the success of the family and yep. at, at the crack of a whip. No, I'm kidding. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't clarify that, they'll be like, "Really? Was she?" <laughs> All I needed was her to say it firmly and give me a look, and that was like, "Ooh, right, right. <laughs> it's it's getting done on this." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's the calmest. She was the calmest person. Where she said, "Well, do you think that if you put that there, that this and make you feel like you just did the most ridiculous but you thing? Found this <laughs> but you, you feel like you just did the most ridiculous thing ever." And she delivers it so calmly to you, and you're just like, "Okay, maybe I'll reevaluate that." Okay, but she we, made you better. She yes, made you better. Our lessons. uncle Robert. I always remember what people say to me. I don't know what it is, but my, our uncle Robert said. Having her as a sister like made you crazy because she was so critical and tough. And he said, but because she had gone to college and she had lived such a life, right? She had a way of seeing your possibility. Like she could see further down the road mm -hmm. than you could see for yourself. I got it. And so she was constantly pushing you, you to do that and be that, right? And when you couldn't see what she saw, when you it was see like... It, you resisted. Yeah, but yeah. if you allowed yourself to go, she made you better. And that is... That's um, true. I'm very grateful yeah, for my grandmother's... Um, Wisdom. You know, the, and, and yeah, and the, the, the resistance, push, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it made me better. And she always won that battle. <laughs> yeah, there was... <laughs> there was no, <laughs> she'd always win that battle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. On that note, on that note, it has been so wonderful having you here. Yeah, and hearing your story and your transition through the workplace and all—it's just been lovely and fun. We're gonna have a little bit yeah. of more fun off camera before she gets on the plane. Yes. And like I said, any comments, <laughs> questions? I, I love the faces. Look at this—they're cracking. Ah, Somebody's cracking up with us. That must be Alicia. <laughs> That is probably, yes. And, um, you know, any comments, questions, any information you need to know, I'm going to post the website again on there. If you know any people that want to be a part of this movement to help support the museum, you know what to do. Yep. So send them our way. Thank you. Love you so much. Yes. <laughs> it's all about it. We're the Huggy Kissy family. That's we what they are. call the Gordies, the Huggy Kissy <laughs> Gordies. Um, so please go out and make somebody smile today. 
And if it's evening, nighttime where you are, or early, bright morning, because we have Australia viewers, London, yeah. all over, make somebody smile. It really hits their soul in a positive way. And be kind. That's Spread love nice. and kindness. That's so important today, especially. Thank you for watching Carla Dawn Live. I will see you next Wednesday at 530. I've got some great guests coming up, as not as great as this one here, <laughs> but they're great subject matters. I always look to inspire, educate, and motivate my audience and have fun, entertain, have right? Fun That's entertain. it. We've had some fun. And cousin, I'm so proud of you oh. and just what you're doing with your show and being such a powerful example and a game changer. I mean, you're educating people and bringing new information forward. So I just wanted to say that for the thank record. You. Really oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. I, I appreciate that. Well, we're going to go ahead over there. Got a little reception going on. Yep. And we're going to join that. And thank you again, everybody. Bye-bye. So come with me.